Vincent Malfatan. Five minutes. Credibility. 
Now, I got to tell you something. If somebody got up here and said, you know, uh, so-and-so doesn't like Mexicans. So-and-so doesn't like black people. So-and-so doesn't like Italians. I would hope you guys would jump out of your seats. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I looked into the state rules and codes and rules and regs for New York State, Title 8, Chapter 2, Subchapter 6, Part 83. It talks about the obligation of the school board when it's brought to their attention that someone is acting with bad moral character. You can remove them from their position. I demand an investigation. Uh, Mr. Malcolmtano, I do find myself as seeing as each one of these meetings responding to your statements, and I want to respond to this one too. And just remind you that the newsletter in question is not a school district publication, and we respectfully decline to conduct investigations into remarks made by school district employees in their private exercise as American citizens of their First Amendment rights. It was used on your network. You're responsible. You let them use your network, and you're going to get sued for it. Done is right. Uh, anyone else uh, before we adjourn the uh, Committee of the Whole session? The last. Mr. Lecker, your rules on public speaking permit people to speak a second time. I'm quoting Rule F. They cannot be recognized a second time until all others who wish to speak have had an opportunity to speak. I'm quoting your Rule 9340 of your regulations. I do wish to speak a second time. Uh, we uh, it, normally we don't. We normally we don't permit it. It's within the discretion of the board. I understand that. I hope you uh, exercise that discretion, but it's clearly in your rules as permitted. Uh, board members, whatever you want to do is okay with me. Three minutes. have a magnanimous board, but it is late, and now uh, we can still pass the veterans' exemption. The veterans have waited a long time, perhaps they'll allow me for three months. But you are right, it's later than you think. Uh, again, I'm quoting this rule, and maybe the public's not aware of it. Part of the uh, Board of Ed rules says very clearly about public speakers, all residents speaking shall, and after going through the list, item F says, not be recognized a second time until all others who wish to have had the opportunity to speak first. I didn't know this rule. I never saw anybody come up a second time until I started doing a little investigating about how this place is really run. That's a good rule. Uh, Mr. Karnstoff, you rushed to judgment. Without knowing the facts, without looking at anything, you just sit there and say, we're not investigating anything. That speaks volumes of itself, does it not, ladies and gentlemen? That someone who is supposedly acting as a superintendent, I hear no evil, I see no evil, I speak no evil. Now, Ms. Davis, who was here, Mr. Lacker may remember when she was running for office, was at the American Legion. And I asked her, Ms. Davis, did you know that we bus kids out of this town that we don't have to pay for? And it's costing us a million two hundred thousand a year, yet we're laying off people, toughest economic times since the Depression. Union people aren't saying squat about it. She says, no, that, that can't be. And I said, it is. I said, do you support that? She says, if what you say is true, no, I don't. Mr. Lanker was there. And I spoke with Mr. Lanker about it. And he said, well, these are the well-off folks that pay so much taxes. Maybe, he, maybe he's an anti-Semite. What do you think? Chicken's coming home to roost. Well, I'm an attorney. I'm not a rich one. Maybe not even that great of a good one. I know how, I know how to file papers. Okay, there's a few folks in this district already know. So I, th I think we're going to see some litigation here. Because when I got to come up here, as Ms. Godfrey says, I'm exercising my right as a citizen, and I got to have people who write this union paper, maybe you know who it is, but it sounds like Mr. Carson doesn't even give a damn to want to find out. Well, 
The regulations say if you know someone who has bad moral character, you can take their license away. Calling someone an anti-Semite, what do you think? Does that qualify? If, if I stand up here and say, I'm a Jew hater. I hate black people. I hate, I hate Italians. I hate mix. And I was employed and paid by this district. Would you think I deserve a job? Mr. Karsoff doesn't even want to look into it. Ladies and gentlemen, you got a problem in this town where you got unions having their members laid off and you're told to shut up about it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Malfitano, since uh, I'm not going to engage in a debate with you, I actually uh, was there the night, and Dr. Davis is not here to speak for herself. I do remember that conversation very well and what she said in response to your truth is she said if you were discussing the only truth it was very key that she said if it was the only truth uh, not just whether what you say has some truth or whether what you say is the only truth that's what Dr. Davis said that night as for what I said that night do not uh, scribe statements to me that I didn't make and do not put words in my mouth and leave that hanging out for the record because I said no such thing of what you said tonight. You did say it, I heard it. And I was the part end of, of the conversation. And that's the end of the and discussion. And you were not part of Ms. Davis's conversation. And that's, okay. I was in the room, as you mentioned, Look, and now we're finished. Yeah, and this we're, meeting is no, adjourned. No, we're not finished, Mr. Lacker. We're gonna, yes. I'm going to see you at a deposition. I look forward to it. This meeting is adjourned, um, and we will go immediately into the special meeting. Uh, oh, we didn't adjourn? Oh, okay, yeah, we're going to adjourn. The next uh, uh, committee of the whole meeting will be next Tuesday at uh, Daniel Webster School, beginning at 7 p.m. The opportunity for some well, of my... Let me ask you directly. Mm -hmm. You heard our conversation. Yes. Regarding the expenditure of some sizable amount of funds mm -hmm. that we're not required to do mm -hmm. to pay for children to go to schools outside New Rochelle because the parents just don't want to send them here. Do you support that? I don't have all the facts. Well, let me lay them out. <laughs> you spend eight hundred thousand dollars. Right. Well, I think it's one point two million mm -hmm. that we are not required to spend by any law of taxpayer funds. <coughs> to bus children who reside in your show to private schools outside of your show. We are not required by law to do that. Right. But the school board has chosen to do that, at least the present members. Since we are not required to do that, I'm suggesting and asking, do you think it's really appropriate to lay off some people who might be lower wage employees losing their insurance? merely to satisfy some political desires of some people in town who want their children bus, although they can afford private schooling. Do you believe that that's good policy? Can I ask you a question? Um, no, I'd like, I'd like to hear, I could, like to hear well, what you think Well, I can about. answer your question based on what you're saying. Well, if what I'm saying is true. If what you're saying is the only part of the story that's well, out there, well, that's the part that concerns like me about, that's what I, there, right. you and if, I are in the same If the state. facts, as I say, are true. If your facts are the only truth, if your facts are the only truth, yes. then I would have to agree with you. However, I'm, the t I'm a researcher. Good. So I'm the kind of person that would be very, very hesitant well, to believe that facts you a from one the source budget. are I'm the sure only facts available. You must have gotten a copy of the budget for yourself. I did. This is page 97. I highlighted for you the expenditure. I'll give you my phone number. I'd like to hear what research you get, and I'd like to hear back from you before the election so I can decide whether to vote for you or not. Okay. Can you promise me that? Can I promise you? That you'll get back to me with your research? I can promise you that I will get back to you. Good. And then I'd like to hear whether what you said changes. But as of right now, <coughs> given what I said, you would oppose that expenditure. If what you said is the only truth that I had available, then... Yeah. If what I say is true, then I'm just hearing that you said you would, you would oppose it. If, you, if what you said okay. is the only thing that's true, then I would not oppose okay. it. Have you discussed this issue with anybody else before coming here this evening? No. Okay.
Hi, my name is Martin Daly. I'm the president of the Federation of United School Employees at 2 Hamilton Avenue. Um, I wasn't going to speak at all, but I, I did want to respond to a couple comments. Um, first, I was going to apologize, not for the content of my newsletter, for the opinions that I expressed, but certainly to the Board of Education. I, I feel sorry that it was a distraction and a controversy that took time away from the important work that you do every day for our students, and I regret that you had to spend so much time on, on something that I wrote. Um, again, I'm not apologizing for the content. I'm sorry for the controversy it's caused. I'm happy to share that after consulting with counsel, which is one of the benefits of belonging to NYSA, um, I'm able to state with pretty accurate certainty that my newsletter is not a my newsletter uh, writing was not a violation of the district's AUP, uh, nor of what is a under the scope of what is allowed under our collective bargaining agreement. I have many times in the past year, since being elected president of the FUSE, shared my impressions and thoughts and, uh, about board proceedings, particularly about the budget. Um, with the members of the FUSE through emailed newsletters. And that's no secret. You know, it's, it's ended up on, it's been posted on the blog, um, Mr. Cox's Talk with Sound, and other places numerous times, and that's, that's fine. Um, our contract, however, specifically allows FUSE to use the internal mailing system for the distribution of notices and correspondence. Thus, by contract and established practice, my use of email to communicate with members is protected, even if my opinions may rankle some. I, um, as to the somewhat bizarre notion that my observations about Mr. Malfatano's frequent targeting the wealthy, influential North End residents who have children in private schools and insisting that the district should initiate a Part 83 hearing to determine whether I have the requisite moral character to maintain my employment, I can only shake my head. Based, on, again, on conversations with counsel and as my own experience on a panelist at the Part 83 hearings, nothing could be further from the truth. It's only an attempt to intimidate the board or to silence me in my criticism of Mr. Malfitano. I can, I, I can also note with irony that as he exercises his First Amendment rights, yelling and over you, speaking at you, and questioning your integrity, I find it kind of funny that a, a you know, rather tempered comment is sending him into a tizzy, insisting that I lose my job, that, that there should be legal action, and that my, I'm not morally fit to exercise my role as a union leader. On the other uh, issue that was raised this evening about release time, I'm not going to negotiate that in public. It is in our contract. It is negotiable. That's, that's, that's true. Um, I'll only say it is, it is certainly within the contracts of most other similarly situated locals in our region, especially larger locals like ours, Mount Vernon, um, Scarsdale, uh, Harrison, White Plains. All the uh, offices in those unions also have released time. My point is just that we're not outliers there, and it's certainly something that if the board chooses to bring to the negotiations table, we'll have that discussion, as we always do. We, nego we negotiate in good faith, and I'm looking forward to our conversations. Thank you.